Greetings Internet, it's Monica, and today I am here with a new video. I'm going to be doing a new book haul, which I'm really excited for. I love book hauls. I love watching book hauls, making book hauls. I just love new books, and so I love seeing. I'm nosy also, I think that's the other thing. So I just love seeing what books people are like so interested in that they choose to buy right now. Uh, so yeah, I love a good book haul. And I'm excited because I have so many good books that I want to share with you guys, some of which I have already read. I'm going to try and not turn this into a wrap up by like waxing verbose about those ones. Uh, but yeah, I have lots of books that I'm just very excited to share with you guys. So before I dive into that, I do want to give a big thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. You guys know if you watch me that I love Skillshare. I've been using them for like well over a year and I've loved getting to work with them because I love using the platform myself. I've used Skillshare to learn more about photography, to painting, to graphic design and everything in between. If you are unfamiliar with Skillshare, it is a platform that offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay in inspired, express yourself better, and introduce you to a community of millions of fellow creators. For me, recently, I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but I feel like throughout all of July, I have just been seeing constant videos of all these people on TikTok recreating this amazing cardigan that Harry Styles wore and it's by J.W. Anderson and they actually released the pattern and the instructions for how to knit this cardigan and so I really wanted to do it because I think it looks amazing and I've always wanted to like knit my own like sweater or something and this just seems like the perfect opportunity for that. Also it seems like relatively doable because it's mostly just like squares that you then put together hopefully but anyways I've been really wanting to do this but I don't really have any of like the basics of crochet or knitting down and I mean my mom is an amazing knitter but I, I feel like you know sometimes it's hard to learn from parents so I am super excited that Skillshare has hundreds of courses from just the most amazing crochet and knit artists. My plan is to do some of those videos, get the hang of it, understand like different stitches and things, and then to tackle this sweater and to have it done by this autumn. You heard it here first. <laughs> if I actually finish it, which I really want to because it looks so cute, uh, but if I finish it you'll definitely be seeing it on my Instagram a lot because when I work on a project I don't shut up about it. So yeah, I'm really excited to get started with that and I'm super excited to be able to use Skillshare in order to facilitate me creating this dream cardigan of mine. So I am also going to include a link in the description box below where you guys can get a couple months of Skillshare completely for free free. It's for the first 1,000 people who click on that link though, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, if you want to try out Skillshare for free, you can use that link. You could join me in my adventures of trying to knit this Harry Styles cardigan, because uh, I think it'll be a fun time. But anyways, without further ado, let's jump in to the book haul. So the first book is one that I have finished already, and it's this one, Kim Ji Young, born in 1982. And this is one that I almost picked up for Karita but I ended up not purchasing it and then like a week later I bought it. I have already read this one. I flew through it honestly. I just I couldn't put this book down. It was so fascinating and gripping. Basically this book, um, Kim Ji Young, is one of the most popular names for women in Korea uh, and this follows a girl, a woman named Kim Ji Young from when she is born to when she is like a 30 year old woman and in following her you're also following every woman in Korea and it, it's really depicting just like what the struggles are for women who are growing up and living in Korea when it comes to sexism and it's just absolutely both heartbreaking but also riveting. I think for me as a Korean American you know I saw a lot of American culture in here but I also saw a lot of this of like distinct Korean culture that I've seen you know, also be part of, like, my own family because, you know, obviously this is stuff that is, like, multi-generational. It gets passed down from person to person and it's definitely stuff that I'm also familiar with and that was really fascinating for me and to, I think, get even more insight into where certain 
mindsets originate from and all of that. I've also was really interested in reading this book because there's been so much controversy surrounding it. Korea, I think when it comes to topics of feminism, it's still it's still a difficult topic and you know, you there are multiple K-pop celebrities. For example, Irene from Red Velvet was just seen with the book and for that her photos were being burnt. And so there's definitely a lot of like controversy surrounding this one because of the topic that it discusses um, and how I think well it discusses that topic and also around the film uh, they did turn this film this they did turn this book into a film which I really want to watch now that I've read it but yeah I love this one I'm super happy to have it in my collection it's filled with lots of page tabs of just moments that stood out to me and that I wanted to remember so yeah I said I wasn't gonna turn this into a wrap-up <laughs> Here I am. Another book that I picked up recently, this is another short one, um, is Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer. I picked this one up. Uh, I've become totally obsessed with watching Kat from Paperback Dreams. I mean, I've always loved her videos, but I feel like recently I've just like gone through and like watched or re-watched re all of her videos for some reason. Uh, I just think she's fantastic and hilarious and so clever. Wish I was half as well-spoken and funny as she is. It's honestly just amazing her content. So yeah, anyways, I picked this one up because she just raved about it so much and I picked up a couple other books from her uh, that I've already read and really loved. So when she said she loved this one, I was like, okay, I will buy that because Kat has not left me down yet. Uh, and this one honestly does sound right up my alley. I love a university set novel. This one is honestly, it's giving me sort of, you know, seeker history kind of vibes, maybe a little bit of like Catcher in the Rye-ish kind of vibes. Maybe that's not a good comparison, but basically it follows a group of women who are all at university together. It's a story of three college students' shared fasc fascination with poetry and death and how one of them must face difficult truths in order to leave her obsession behind. So yeah, I'm getting like secret history, dead poet society kind of vibes, but with women. Also, I don't think I've ever actually read anything by Meg Wolitzer, and I've, it's, she's always been an author sort of on my list of people to read. And also it's just like a really good floppy paper back. I, I don't know if anyone else cares about this like I do, but the way a book feels, honestly, it, it makes up like 5%. Maybe not that much. It makes up at least a tiny bit of like the full reading experience, you know? So I love a book that just feels good to hold. This is weird. I'm gonna move on now. Another short book that I picked up is Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami. Uh, this is a book that I read with my Patreon book club and um, I liked it. I would... I, I'm gonna make this comparison, but I also am wary to make this comparison because I think it's gonna turn it into an auto-buy for a lot of people. Uh, and I, I will say I felt kind of lukewarm about this book, but this book kind of gives me Studio Ghibli vibes but for adults in the sense that it it's very much the everyday life like they're really there's nothing whimsical happening in this novel despite the way the cover looks uh, but the way that it depicts everyday life as just being worthy of being documented of being special of of just like depicting those quiet moments as important um, I think in that sense that's that's what kind of gave me those Ghibli vibes. However, I will say for me, this one, I, I can't really say anything horribly negative about it. It just wasn't as like, it just didn't hit for me, you know, as well as other books have. And, and for me, it's like, it's one that I left it and I was like, yeah, that was, that was nice. And that was kind of it. That was kind of all I really felt. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> uh, take that for what you will. I definitely want to try more by this author because I really did like the writing style. I think if I just connected with the characters more or the story more, maybe I would have appreciated it, the overall novel more. But I definitely, I wouldn't not recommend this book. I think it just depends on the mood you're in and the type of reader you are will decide if this is the book for you. Then I picked up this next book because my friend Matthew Sharapa, who is also a booktuber, um, I'll link him down below, but he recommended this book to me. It's one of his favorites and it's Vida Nostra and this is a Russian novel that's been translated into English. It's a Russian fantasy magical novel. It takes place at a boarding school. However, our main character quickly discovers this is no ordinary school. The books are impossible to read. The 
lessons obscure to the point of maddening, and the knowledge itself refuses to be remembered. Despite this, Sasha undergoes changes that defy matter and time, with experiences that are nothing like what she could have dreamed of before. And honestly, like, that description just, like, totally captivated me, and it just sounds like the kind of book I'll love, to be honest, like very atmospheric. And I have i don't think I've really read Russian literature before, especially not contemporary Russian literature. So for that reason, I'm also really excited for this one. And yeah, I, I just also really trust Matthew's opinions. And I think he gives great book recommendations. If you're not following him, I highly recommend. He's definitely one of my favorite people to go to bookstores with. Um, another book that I read because of Cat is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and now I want to own every book by Talia Hibbert. Uh, yeah so I've already read this one. I actually buddy read this one with my friend Christina Marie who is another booktuber that you all should check out and be subscribed to because she is also wonderful. Um, but yeah, we buddy read this one, which was so much fun. This is a romance novel following Chloe Brown. She's basically making this get a life list, like this list of sort of activities that she views will help her sort of get out of her com comfort zone and, and live a fuller life uh, because she has been dealing with you know, a chronic illness and chronic pain, um, and that has left her to feel really isolated from people, from friends and family, and the novel, you know, talks a lot about that, and, you know, the way that people, uh, can often let down friends who, you know, need them most. And then you have Red, who is just the, the most wonderful wonderful man. He's the super of her building, I want to say, and he's also an artist. Um, and they kind of start off in this very, like, not very friendly relationship because they've they've just really misjudged each other. Uh, and then, you know, they get to know each other over the course of the book. And, you know, he helps her check off her to-do list. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful romance novel. And I don't typically like romance. This is one of the reasons why I picked it up is because I know Kat also doesn't typically like romance. So that's why I was like, okay, well, if she likes it, maybe I'll like it too. Um, and that's nothing bad about romance. I just think readers look for different things in books. And for me, I've really struggled to find romances that I've just really connected to and loved. Um, but I think after reading this, I have a more clear direction of the kinds of romances that I prefer and enjoy. And for me, it's very much so like, I love how character driven this story was. And I loved how realistic it was. And in a lot of ways, it was so refreshing from any book I've read recently and how well it depicted like mental health and, you know, just therapy in general and, you know, being compassionate towards other people. Even just like the way, like their thought process through it was so refreshing. And I don't want to talk too much about that because I don't want to spoil things. And I'm talking too much about this book. This is not a wrap up. Okay, I'm going to stop, but I really enjoyed this book. <laughs> it was a good time. I highly recommend it. Cannot wait to buy more of Talia Hibbert's novels and read them. On that front, I did pick up Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I picked this one up because my friend Sarah from Sarah Without an H, another booktuber, I'll link her down below too, she's amazing, uh, she read this one and loved it. Honestly, the premise of this one just sounds so fun. Basically, it follows these two authors who go on vacation, not together, they just sort of by happenstance end up at the same resort and one uh, is a literary fiction novel, the guy, and then the woman is a romance novel writer and did I just call him a literary fiction novel? <laughs> He's a novelist, not an actual book. Uh, but anyways, they meet and they end up swapping genres and writing from each other's genres. And that just sounds fascinating to me. I'm just really intrigued for that part of it. Uh, but then obviously it is also a romance novel. So I'm really excited for that. And I'm just super intrigued. And I've heard, even outside of Sarah, uh, just so many people love this one, so I'm really excited. So a book that has been getting just a bunch of buzz, I feel like, on booktube lately has been The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith, and I am about a third of the way through this one right now, and I'm really enjoying it. Basically, this takes place in a library of unwritten novels, and the library is set in hell. Uh, not that it is part of hell, but it's just there. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> it's a library of unwritten novels, and the the librarian that we follow, Claire, in this novel, she is set with the task of keeping the books 
uh, in, in check because oftentimes characters from books want to escape to go, you know, find their authors or just, you know, want to live a different life or something because they're, you know, bored that their author hasn't written their book or whatever. Um, and so Claire's job is to keep the books contained and on their shelves within this unwritten library. Uh, however, one of the books ends up escaping at the beginning of the novel, and there's also a whole other plot with, like, heaven and hell and this, like, devil's bible, but I, I'm not really 100% sure about that plot just yet because I've only just started it. But I really enjoy this one so far. I would compare it to, like, A Good Omen's meets The Starless Sea in that it's a book about books and I think the way that that part is written is really beautiful but also it's quirky and it's this fun fantasy that takes an interesting and different approach to religion and the afterlife that I think is really fascinating. So I've been really enjoying my read of this one so far and I actually just got approved for the sequel on NetGalley so I'm really excited to finish this one and hopefully start the sequel very soon. Then I got Burned by Patrick Ness. Patrick Ness is one of my favorite authors of all time. I just adore him um, and his books tend Tend to be very like high concept, a little bit out there, uh, and so they're kind of also very difficult to explain if you haven't read them yet. So all I'm gonna say about this one is that it's set in the 1950s, like an alternate universe version of the 1950s where dragons exist. And that's all I'm gonna say because I try, like, I tried to read the synopsis, and I feel like every time I try to describe this book, I'm like, this makes zero sense. <laughs> so I'm hoping that when I actually read it, I'll be able to talk about it a bit more intelligently. Right now, I can't offer that to you, so yeah. But if you've read it, let me know your thoughts. I mean, don't spoil it for me, but. I'm always down to talk Patrick Ness. Then I picked up this really lovely, just super floppy good fantasy novel. I love a good, like, big floppy book, you know? Uh, but anyways, this one um, I was really intrigued by because it's, I feel like it's just gotten a ton of praise and so I've been wanting to pick it up for a while. And it has a really great uh, blurb from S.A. Chakraborty uh, where she wrote, The Rage of Dragons takes the best parts of epic fantasy and sets them in a refreshing and inventive world, a gripping tale that makes clear the true cost of war and colonialism with one of the most enthralling hero's journeys I've read, which just sold me. I was like, yes, I need to read that. That sounds fascinating. I love fantasy books that critique, like, war and battles and stuff, um, and I'm super intrigued for what this book is going to be about. It's been compared with Game of Thrones meets Gladiator. Honestly, two things I don't really like. <laughs> But uh, the concepts that this book is supposed to explore are things that I really like when books explore, so I'm hoping that I do enjoy it. Uh, we will see how I get on with it. If you've read it, let me know your thoughts. Uh, for any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of my picks. Are there ones that, you're, that you've read that you've really liked, ones that you really want me to read first? Let me know. Um, but yeah, this one sounds super fascinating. It is definitely a large one, though, so... It'll be a bit of an endeavor, but I'm excited for it. Another fantasy novel that I picked up is this one, The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, who I has become one of my favorite authors after only reading one of her books because it was that good, the fifth season. And this one takes place in New York City. It's got a blurb from Neil Gaiman saying it's a glorious fantasy. Not that that means anything to me because I've never read any Neil Gaiman books, which I know I just compared another book to Good Omens, but I should qualify that I mean Good Omens the TV show not the book. Uh, but anyways, uh, I have been really excited for this one because I love New York City and this one takes place in New York City. I think the, a lot of the fantasy really mythologizes the city in general, which is super fascinating for me. So yeah, I've been really happy for this one. And also this cover is so cool. Like, wow, what a, what, what a good color scheme. I was also sent by uh, Hyperion Books The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert, uh, which is a novel I've been really excited for. Brandy Colbert is the author of Little and Lion, which has gotten a ton of praise, but The Voting Booth sounds super fascinating. It takes place during the election, obviously. On election day, you have two characters, 
our um, one of our characters is this girl who's really excited to vote for the first time. She's been canvassing, and you have a boy who, on voting days, denied the right to vote, and she uh, ends up fighting for him to be able to get that right, uh, and or to be able to vote. And other than that, I don't really know much else, but it sounds really fascinating. I'm really excited just for the concept in general. I've never read a book that takes place on voting day or around an election, especially following teens, and I'm really excited for that in particular. So yeah, I, I, I'm hyped for this one and super excited that Hyperion thought to send it my way. It was an exciting package. And then a while back, uh, I watched one of Lala's, or watched basically, basically all of Lala's videos, uh, and one of the books that she talks about pretty often is this one called Bunny by Mona Awad, and it just sounds so interesting, and I've been wanting to pick it up for a while ever since she gave it such high praise, and then I saw this amazing pink and yellow edition, which is like my favorite color scheme, and I was like, yes, I need it. It's also super floppy, so I was like, I need it even more, uh, but this one has been compared to like The Secret History Meets Heathers, I think, basically follows a bunch of rich girls at a university who all for some reason call each other bunny and that's all I know. I know it's supposed to be weird and dark and I'm excited for all of those things so this is definitely one I am very excited to get to. All right we have come to the last chunk of the book haul. This chunk uh, is all one author. <laughs> so basically I recently read Heartstopper Volume 1 and fell in love. Like, I just I felt all the feelings. I also picked this up because of Kat, I'm realizing. <laughs> oh, anyways, uh, is, am I a paperback reads fangirl now? Maybe, maybe. But anyways, I read this in one sitting. I couldn't put it down. I just, I loved it so much. It's basically just like, kind of, it's basically just like this little simple romance between these two boys who have a crush on each other, and I love them with all my heart. And I just, like, it's just, the, the storytelling in it is so simple, but well done. It kept me captivated, and I felt, like, all of the emotions while reading it. It was just perfect. It was a perfect graphic novel. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So yeah, <laughs> I picked up then the next two books in the Heartstopper series, uh, Heartstopper Volume 2 and Volume 3, which I cannot wait to get to. I might actually read Volume 2 right after finishing this video because I really just, I want to know what happens next. I love it so much. Um, also, these are printed editions of an online comic that she does. So once like once I read volume three then I can catch up with wherever she's at online which I'm excited to do um, and I'm excited that I don't have to wait in between all the books being published to continue with the story but yeah I love these and they look beautiful together by the way but I did not stop there I also picked up two Alice o Oseman novels because I've never read anything by her before um, Radio Silence is one that gets a ton of praise I know so many people love it including Kat <laughs> <laughs> and I've just been super, uh, super intrigued for it for a while, and I just never pulled the trigger because I knew I wanted the UK editions because these are obviously superior, uh, but I just never felt like putting in the effort of getting them. But after reading Heartstopper, I was like, yes, now is the time. Radio Silence, I believe, follows um, two teens who do podcasts. And I think one of them is like a pretty popular, famous podcaster. Uh, and then I Was Born For This is, follows a teen who's in a pop punk band and another one who is like a huge fan of that band. Obviously those descriptions are very high level, uh, but I'm just really excited because after reading Heartstopper, I just, I have a lot of faith in the way that Alice Oseman writes characters. Like I'm just very excited to read more from her. So yeah, that's my book haul. That's everything. I'm so excited that I finished this book before my battery died because it's been flashing at me for a while. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you have any thoughts about the books that I've picked up, let me know in the comments down below, but please no spoilers. Again, if you want to check out Skillshare for two months for free, that link will be in the description box below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye!